Good morning, good evening, crispy butter. Hey, buddy, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Who is that playing the bass? Because that's a good bass line. It's good, isn't it? It's um. The band is called Medeski Martin. And oh, Medeski Martin and Wood. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Album is called Let's Go Everywhere, and the I song is Where's the Music. I love these guys. And Wood is the bass player, right. and uh, he he and his brother have kind of a folk rock kind of band too, which is huh. really good. He plays he plays stand up bass. Oh. He's amazing. Yeah. So what are they? Just organ, bass, and drums? Yeah. They don't they don't sing. Just good. <laughs> pure like avant garde jazz blues kind of right. stuff. Yeah, it's really we, good. We, there's a band in Melbourne. I can't remember their name, but they're a same setup, just organ, bass, drums, and they were playing live. This was pre-lockdown. They were playing live, and I was super excited to go and see them. And they came out on stage, and they started. And the first song was just unbelievable. It was just in the pocket. It was such a great groove. The drummer and the bass player were on fire. It was like, oh, this is going to be an amazing night of instrumental, awesome jazz, and Three songs in, they brought out this guest vocalist, this this guest female singer, who then came out and just started to like wail over their music and sing. And I'm like, no, no <laughs> you just ruined everything. Go away, just let them play the music, <sighs> man. And I'm a singer, so uh, anyway, there you go. How are you, dude? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. I forgot to put on my lights in the background here. Let's get those oh, going. There we go. Oh, well, there we go. Look at that. Just yeah. popping the lights on. Hey, no, <laughs> look, mum, no hands. Chris Gilbert is here from Alberta in Canada. Hey, if you're watching, by the way, in the Facebook group, let us know which country you are from. Hey, Max, I think we need more. I was thinking about this the other day. But a lot of people watch this on their phone. I oh, know. While they're in bed at night trying to get to sleep or while they're, you know, having their late night dump before they uh, go to bed. Did I just say that out loud? And what I realise is that a lot of people who are watching this can't necessarily hear what we're saying. So I think we need more supers, mate, more lower thirds, more supers, more slides, more visuals to tell people what we're doing, maybe a little sidebar of the agenda. Uh, what country are you in? Let us know. Good afternoon from you're, Alberta. You're assuming Canada. we have an agenda. Well, that's right. That would, that would, that's that's the problem with that is that you would make an assumption that we have an agenda. Um, hey, James Murgatroyd and Chris Gilbert are both here from Alberta, Canada. I don't know. Maybe you guys should just hang out on Zoom and have an accountability call and find out where you're at and how you're doing. Uh, Robert Mecklen says, "Teach us all in sign language." I don't. I don't. I can't. Apart from that, I don't know any sign language. So. That's the only sign I know. And that, actually, I've taught Oscar bonza. That means bonza in Australia, which is good. That means peace. Uh, and he knows that means piss off, which he's not allowed to say. And that means go away or no good. Um, Keith Eldridge is here from Japan. Wow. Anthony wow. Oki, 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 Okiuto. Okiuto. Oh, come on. Anthony Okiuto? Anthony Okuyuto, spell it out for me, Anthony. Spell it out for me. Anthony Okuyuto from Sydney, Australia. Someone else here from Ontario, Canada. What's going on in Canada? Anonymous Facebook user. Keith, wow. Keith, what time is it in Japan right now? Early. It's got to be like 4 a.m., doesn't it? like 5 a.m., right? It's got to be early. What are you doing? Why are you up? Why are you up at five o'clock in the morning listening to us clowns here in the Digital Mavericks <laughs> Facebook group? Hey, this is an episode of the Agency Hour podcast. That's right. We're turning this into a podcast. Apparently, we're going to have an intro and bumpers and an outro. I got it right. Okuto. 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 Anthony Okuto. Oh, yeah, there you go. Okuto. Oh, that makes sense. There we go. There we go. Uh, excellent. It's 6 a.m. in Japan. Um we're turning this to an episode of the podcast, which will be, I don't know when we're going to launch it. I have no idea, but uh, we're going to launch it soonish and it'll be on your favorite podcatcher. It'll be on Spotify. Max, did you write that down? It'll be on Spotify. It'll be on Apple Podcasts. It'll be on the Google Play, whatever they call it these days. Wherever you get your podcasts, it'll be. It'll be called the Agency Hour. We're going to live stream it here into the Facebook group and then suck the audio out and uh, polish it up 
and publish that as a, a podcast. So we're very excited about that. Very cool. Now, what are we talking about today? What's the plan today? I don't know. It's something about a <clears throat> magic trick. A magic trick. Wow. Let me just have a look at what I've got in my – I've got nothing in there. Uh, a magic trick. Uh, what what did we publish? What What are the people expecting? Always go back to what the people are expecting. What are their expectations? And let's see how quickly we can disappoint them. I'm going to make them an offer he can't refuse. Oh, there he is, <laughs> Marlon Brando. Uh, playing the Godfather. Now, if I come over to the Digital Mavericks Facebook group, was there a post that went out? Here we go. Oh, here we go. We're giving away one small piece of the Godfather method for free. That's right. I'm going to teach uh, a framework. Pete has no idea what I'm going to do in, in this episode, by the way. He's a little scared, I think. I'm going to teach you an awesome in the dark. <laughs> That's where we like you, mate. Um, <laughs> A framework that allows you to create up to 1,320 customised offers on the fly based on the individual prospect sitting opposite you and what they have told you. That's right. Um, and Robert makes a good point. They won't see our head bobbing up and down to the music on the podcast because it's just an audio podcast. So you'll have to tune in to the group to watch the video. So this is straight out of uh, the Godfather Method. This is a part of, I'm getting a little bit of feed. Is that Was that you, Max? I'm getting a little bit of latency on my voice. No, it's all good now. Um, this is straight out of the Godfather Method. And just for those that don't know, we are in the middle of a launch of the Godfather Method, which is our latest training, which is going to help you create offers that your prospects can't refuse. Now, this is, Pete actually mentioned something in our private Slack um, this morning to the other coaches. This, and, and he's right. This is not just a sales tactic. All right, uh, I'm going. actually going to, and I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of context. Kat, who produces all of our wonderful playbooks here, which you're about to see in a moment, when I originally kind of did the brain dump to Kat about what the Godfather Method is all about and how to use it and all that kind of stuff, she went through it and put this playbook together and came back and said, I feel like this has been the missing piece in my signature system. Like I've got this signature system but I haven't really been able to communicate it to prospects and, and clients, you know, what it is we do and even the team, what it is we do. And so uh, Pete said here in the uh, our, our uh, Slack channel this morning, here's the promise, here's the premise, here's the premise. It's not a sales technique per se. It's more of a way to take your signature system to the next level by offering things that no competitor would ever think to offer. It makes it so that you are unique and literally don't have any competitors selling in a vacuum, as they say. And so that your offer is so good, they can't refuse. Now, big inspiration from Alex Hormozzi's book, A $100 million Offer, and big shout out to what I've learned there from Alex. And this is an appropriation of some of that thinking uh, and, and how you get away from talking about websites, SEO, and care plans, because all, that's, all, all those things are commodities, as we know, and they are a race to the bottom. The only thing, if you're selling websites and SEO and care plans, the only thing you've got to compete on is price. And that's a conversation that we have all had and a conversation that we don't want to have again because it's a very boring conversation because you just end up discounting to get the job, right? So what I want to do with the Godfather method, what we want to do here is help you communicate what it is you do in a way that the client can't negotiate on price because they can't get this anywhere else except from you, okay? That's the premise of uh, what we're doing here. Marvin Vasquez, is that how I say it? Martin Vasquez? I reckon I've pronounced that wrong. Is here and hasn't clicked the link to give StreamYard permission to know who he is. So he's coming up as anonymous Facebook user and he's here from New York. So do you think we should share a screen and maybe go through a bit of the work? I'd love, I'd, I have not, um, I've not seen this playbook yet. Okay. All right. Well, let's uh, let's go through it, and 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 let me also give you a little bit of context. This typically fits at the there. There are two places where the Godfather method fits in your sales process or your marketing and sales process. One, right at the very beginning, to get people to put their hand up and express interest in what you're doing. Now, you might notice no one else is selling a program called the Godfather method, right? So you can't get it anywhere else. You can't get this anywhere else. You can only get it from Agency Mavericks because we made it up. So at the very start of your marketing 
uh, system or process or engine or whatever you want to call it is where you would use a piece of the Godfather method to get people to put their hand up and express interest in what you're doing. And then right at the end of your sales process, you would, in fact, I think, you know, I think there's another, um, I think there's another worksheet I have to show you before I show you the Godfather method. It's just occurred to me that, uh, let me just see if I can very quickly, uh, uh, here it is, look at that, Max, you will tell you what, brother, your filing system in Google Drive is a, a work of art, my friend. Makes it very easy for me to find what I'm looking for exactly when I need it. Thank you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through, I'm going to show you a flow chart, very pretty flow chart of our sales process that we recommend. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to share this one first. Here's the sales process that we recommend and that we use ourselves. And it all begins with somebody expressing in, oh, hello. It all begins in somebody <laughs> express, hand off the mouse. It all begins in somebody expressing interest in what it is you do, right? <laughs> I've been around the Godfather here in New York. Uh, tell me how, let me know in the chat, Pete, you let me know. How would somebody express interest in what it is you're doing? What are the different ways that someone would express interest in what it is you've got going on? Uh, through answering um, some call to action on your website, through uh, reaching out to you on Facebook or, or through a Facebook ad or a Google ad. Um, any, you know, they might sometimes they just pick up the phone and, and hey, how much is a website? Um, yeah. And uh, or send an email or get referred to you. Um, there's yep. a million different ways, really. Yep. Well, maybe not a million, but there's a couple. Hundred. Well, actually, we published a blog post uh, uh, a little while ago, a few years ago on the uh, the website, and I think it was called 27 Places to Find Clients. We polled our audience and we actually discovered that there are 20, well, in, in our audience, there were 27 different channels that people had used to land clients, including Tinder. True story. One of our one of our uh, one of our audience members went out on a date with someone and it didn't work out, but she ended up building him a website. Um, yes, Belinda Linhart says the good old phone responding to an email campaign says Robert Mecklen. Yes, um, there are many 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 ways that you can get someone to put their hand up. I even say that uh, here's a little hack for you. Ready for a little hack? Ready for a little hack? Oh look, I think I need to. I think I need to. Uh, share a different screen. Okay, we're going deep here. We're going deep. We are going we are, deep. We are also we, off script. <laughs> we are totally off script, and which is the way I love it, as you know, and we are going deep. You know what? Here we go. I'm going to share this screen here. Let me show you a little hack to find a bunch of people who might be interested in what it is you do really quickly. And let me share this screen. Let me go over here and I'll dive into LinkedIn. Here we go. Um, now, in LinkedIn, if you know someone in your space who is a bit of an influencer, let's say, for example, that I was going after accountants, I might come up to LinkedIn and I might search for CPA Australia. Here we go. Certified Practicing Accountants Australia. It's probably the largest industry body uh, in uh, Australia for accountants. And I might come over here to companies and I find CPA Australia got 116,000 followers, right? It's a pretty good target audience. So I'm going to come over to their page here. What I'm looking for is uh, they've got 1,346 employees. Oh, might be a good place to start building relationships there. Uh, looks like they're putting out a podcast. What I'm looking for is their posts, the activity that CPA Australia have published recently. Look at this, 23 hours ago, they published this, which has had 254 engagements and six comments, right? Now, the engagements tells me who has engaged on that post. Unbelievable. Look at this. Registered BAS agent with the Tax Practitioners Board and Associate Member of CPA Australia, assistant accountant at Roberts, Lumley and Associates, prospect, finance business partnering at Life Without Barriers, prospect, 
Associate Director, Finance, Strategy and Performance at KPMG Australia. They're probably too big, so we'll leave them alone. Manager at McLean Partners, Chartered Accountants. Prospect. (laughs) Don't tell me. I have this conversation all the time. People are like, I need leads. Really? You just ain't thinking creatively enough. This is, now these people have all liked or clapped or loved or done thoughtful face or idea on this post from CPA. These are potentially ideal candidates and there's 254 of them. So I would suggest, now there's a couple of little things you can do. In fact, the people who left the comment um, are the most engaged, right? Uh, But there are some tools that you can use to actually just grab these leads and stick them into a LinkedIn pipeline or an email pipeline and just start reaching out and connecting with them. But the first thing you might want to do is just come in and check out their profile. Visit their profile. They will get a notification that you visited their profile, which is just like a billboard. It's like branding. They see your name in your face. And then connect with them and they see your name in your face. And then email them and they see your name in your face, right? So just want to share that little hack with you. Go and find an influencer in your space. How easy was that? That took me about 13 seconds to find 254 potential prospects that we can start a conversation with. Lovely. Any comments or thoughts or feedback? No, I'm on my own here, aren't I? Sorry, uh, my mic was muted. Um, I noticed you were uh, one degree away from several of them too. So that's even an easier introduction. That's a referral. That's a referral, exactly. So let's pretend that you know how to get someone to express interest in what it is you are talking about. And I'll give you a hint. Publish some useful content on the internet because all of the computers in the world and most of the smartphones in the world are all connected to each other. It's really easy to get your content into the hands of people who might be interested. And I don't know why I'm talking as if I'm drunk. But <laughs> I'm not sure why using that voice, but yeah. It's fun, isn't it? It's good to talk as if you're a little bit on the tipple. I think it's a lot of fun. And so um, I do this character with Oscar called Jason. And Jason's been drinking too much gin. So sometimes when I read Oscar books at night, he'll say, can you read it like Jason? And I say, of course I can. And I'll read him a book like Jason. We have a bit of a chuckle together. Uh, There's a bunch of other characters I do, which I won't share with you here. So let's say someone has expressed interest in what it is you're doing, right? No helmet. I'm talking about uh, finding an influencer in your space and seeing what they've posted and having a look at the people who have engaged on their post, right? Um, If you were targeting entrepreneurs, for example, you'd just go and look at Gary V, wouldn't you? And you'd have a look at all the people that have commented on his post and then you would try and sell them something, wouldn't you, even though they have no money because they're following Gary V. Uh, If you were, you know, looking to sell... In Australia, if you were looking to sell to plumbers or builders, you might go to Master Builders, who are a peak body organisation that represent a large audience that you want to target. Okay, make sense? Good. Now, once someone has expressed interest, uh, I'm not going to walk through all of this now, but, uh, but what I'm going to say here is that the Godfather method can be used here. The Godfather method can be used right here uh, because you can just give someone a breadcrumb from the Godfather method, they go, oh, that's interesting. Very interesting, right? You never try and solve never try and solve the entire problem when you post content. Just solve one problem when you post content. And remember that your content should not only solve one problem, but probably create more questions than it answers. Right? That's the way that you just gradually get people to come closer and closer to you. Because If you posted a piece of content, I mean, you can't post a piece of content that solves all questions anyway, right? I mean, it's impossible. You can, even if you produced an an enormous guide on how to do something, like, for example, an enormous guide on email marketing, you could produce like a 500-page epic guide on email marketing. That would be really helpful. However, it wouldn't include how to get people to join your email list in the first place or how to use SEO to get people to come to your website and opt in because that's a completely different conversation or how to run ads to build your email list 
or how to take your email list and feed it into a remarketing campaign in Facebook. That's a different conversation. But it might be an amazing guide on what to do the moment someone joins your email list to get them to become a client. And that could be an epic guide, but it only solves one problem, doesn't it? There are a whole bunch of other questions still unanswered. Okay, so just remember that. Uh, so the Godfather method can be used here to produce one little piece of content to help them solve a problem, be helpful, add value, right? Gary V got that bit right, right? Jab, 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 hook, right? Value, 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 offer. Value, 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 ask. Value, 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 pitch, right? Um, and then what we do in our, in our sales process, and this is the exact same process we teach in Sales Accelerator and Mavericks Club, uh, is that we pre-qualify them, then we book them in for a triage call. If they pass the triage call, we give them some homework. <laughs> then, <laughs> I will, James, don't worry, I won't hold back. After uh, that, they go into a strategy call. They either buy on the strategy call, if not, they go into an anti-follow-up campaign. Uh, they can be qualified out at any point here if they're not a good fit. Uh, here, it's either not now or we win the deal, right? So this is the sales process that we advocate and that we use ourselves okay so any questions I see, about i see three places where you would use the the godfather method there oh i know the other i know oh actually let's 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 ask let's ask the audience shall we let's yeah, see if they're away i think i know i think i know where you uh, are also hinting at where the godfather method could be used where else could the godfather method be used if we're going to use it here we're definitely going to use it in the expression expression of interest or jason's back we're going to definitely use it during the expression of interest bit. And we're definitely going to use it on the strategy call. I actually think there are four places you can use it. Yes, you can use it on the strategy call, right? Where else could you use the Godfather method? Where else could you use the Godfather method? Martin says, we've all experienced this process and it works. That's right, Martin. By the way, congratulations. Didn't I hear you just joined Sales Accelerator, Martin? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Did I hear that you just joined Sales Accelerator this morning? I'm very excited for you if you did because it's a fantastic program and this is what you're going to learn. Anonymous um, Facebook user with a, with a very good answer. Now, yes, so you would definitely use the Godfather method in the anti-follow-up sequence after the strategy call before they actually close, right? But I actually think there's one more place you can use it. I'll put you out of your misery. You can use it as part of the homework that you give them between the triage call and the strategy call. And really that homework should be, we've got examples of this that we give our members. The homework should be designed to educate and confuse them at the same time. It's basically the traditional education model that we've got here in the developed world. When you start and you're about five years old and you finish when you're 18 and the entire time you're learning things and just becoming more and more confused at the same time. It's a brilliant system. Their retention rate is pretty high, pretty low churn in the traditional education system. So this is what we oh, I crack myself up. This is what we're advocating here as well, right? So the homework, well, you could use it in all the steps, Robert. You, you could, but, uh, but strategically, I think you can definitely use it in the expression of interest, uh, the homework, the strategy call to close them, and then anti-follow-up, yes? All right, very good. So I'm going to stop sharing that screen. And now I'm going to come back to the actual, how do you piece the Godfather method together into a conversation, a few sentences that you can use to have a conversation? And how can you do this in a way that gives you 1,300, this is genius, by the way, 1,320 different ways of basically saying the same thing, Right? Let me show you. Let me share my would, screen. You would want to do that? <laughs> well, it all depends on the person sitting on the other side of the conversation, right? Let me show you. I'm going to share uh, the playbook straight out of the Godfather method here, okay? It's very exciting. Look at this. Look at this. It's fantastic, isn't it? Um, now, this is the framework for the pitch, okay? I'm going to walk you through it. And I'm going to educate you and we're going to get some answers. And I'm also going to try and confuse the hell out of you. So you join the Godfather method to get the rest of the answers. That's how it works. And Jason will be inside the Godfather method too. And you'll be hanging out with all of us. This is my first introduction to Jason. I'm, I'm a little scared. 
Jason's good. I can't wait to bring Jason out to the States. He's going to love it out there. Right, so we help target audience. Now, first of all, this is usually used during a strategy call, right? It's usually used during the strategy call to close them. The first bit here is called your, oh, here we go. The first bit here is called your UVP. This bit here is your unique value proposition, the reason people should buy from you, okay? I'm going to show you an example of this in a moment. Of course I am. I wouldn't leave you with a bunch of blank spaces and like, like we're playing hangman. <laughs> oh, that's right, Jason. Oh, I really like Jason so much. He's such a good friend. I love hanging out with Jason. Um, this is your, I'm having, I'm having flashbacks. Way too much fun right now. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks to Silence is Golden. Right. There were many times during Silence is Golden where I actually lost the plot so much I had to leave the set. Um, okay. So this is your unique value proposition, right? Uh, we help, and I'm going to show you an example of this in a moment. We help target audience trapped in problem. Now, here's the thing. This is a framework. Try not to say it word for word. Otherwise, you end up sounding a bit weird. Yeah. You sound like a bit of a robot, right? We helped target audience with problem, right, trapped in whatever problem. I'll show you an example of this in a moment. Two, and these are your three pillars of transformation. These are the three big things that you help clients with, right? Could be rankings, traffic, conversions, for example, right? We help target audience with problem to achieve pillars of transformation using our blah right now again this is a this is a conversation framework don't say it word for word let me show you an example of this we help time poor dentists i would never say that because you sound like it's scripted we help time poor dentists trapped on the treadmill of their practice grow their revenue increase profits and rescue at least one day per week using our dental practice playbook I would never say that in real life because you sound like a moron. What I would say, though, is something like this, right? Uh, I would say something like, well, you know, typically we help dentists who are a little bit time poor because they're usually kind of stuck on the treadmill of their own practice. We help them grow their revenue, become more profitable, and usually get a day a week back in their life. Uh, and we do that using a proprietary framework we've built, and we call it the Dental Practice Playbook. Much more conversational, much more dialogical, as I like to say. I'm sure that's a word. I hope it is. And, um, <laughs> and it's dialogical, meaning we're having a dialogue. And so that is your UVP, right? You, now, the, the point is fill in the blanks, but say it over and over and over and over and over again and practice and practice and practice until it just you can say it organically and authentically without sounding like someone who is a little bit buttoned up. You want to make it sound a little bit relaxed, okay? Not as not as relaxed as Jason, maybe. But not as relaxed as Jason, but maybe. Who knows? Jason's fun. So um, now that's your UVP. So so typically, what happens is you get to the end of a sales call, and someone's like, "Well, this is all great. How can you help me? And what do you do?" And you say, "Well, we help dentists like you. Sounds like you're pretty time poor." And uh, we help dentists like you who, who kind of feel like you're a bit stuck on the treadmill in your own practice. We help you grow your revenue, uh, increase your profit margins on the services that you're delivering. And typically speaking, uh, most of our dentists end up with a day a week in free time uh, because of what we help them uh, restructure in their practice. And we do that with a proprietary framework that we've built called, and we call it the Dental Practice Playbook version 4.4. Does that sound interesting? And they go, oh, that's great. Can you tell me more about that? How does it work? And that's the whole point of your UVP. I'll get serious here for a moment. The whole point of your UVP is you want people at the end of your UVP, you want people to say, oh, that's interesting. How does it work? Now, let's practice that again, shall we? We build websites for dentists. Yeah. A, dent and <laughs> a, a, a dentist is not going to say, well, that's interesting. How does it work? They're not going to say that because everyone knows what that looks like. You build websites. No, the, the first question they're going to ask is how much does it cost? How much does it cost? Exactly. Because yeah, it's a price right. It's a price thing now. Yes, correct. That's right. Now, that's the point of your UVP, right? 
The point of the UVP is to have people say, oh, that sounds interesting. How does it work? How do you do that? Not how much does it cost, right? Then we say something like this. Well, I'm glad you asked. Everything we do is customised for each client based on what it is they need. But for you, it's typically going to be three steps based on what you've told me to get you what they desire. Let's have a look at an example, shall we? Everything we do is customised for each dentist based on what they've told us and, and based on what you've told me. For you, this is going to be three steps to get you more revenue, more profitable services and more time. Let me just give you a bit of context. A lot of dentists don't necessarily want to grow revenue. They want to grow profitable revenue. So they want to grow cosmetic dentist, major dental work, Invisalign, all that kind of stuff that's high profit margin. So just saying we'll help you grow revenue for a lot of dentists is like, no, I don't want more revenue. I want more profit margin. More revenue means I have to work an extra half yes. a day a week and I'm already working eight days a week, so I, there's no more time. So uh, this would be, you know, you basically, you basically fill this in based on what they have told you. Okay, now I'll come back to this in a second. We'll answer some questions. Um, that's right, dentists are down in the mouth and they want to get out of the mouth. So we help you grow your revenue, more profit margin in that revenue and free up a day a week for you, okay? And so for you, we would, and this is, this is where things get a little interesting, right? For you, right, now that we understand, now that we, now, so we've said everything we do is customised for each client based on where they are and based on what you've told me, I think it's going to be three steps to get you to grow your revenue, make that revenue more profitable and free up a day a week for you. Do you want me to walk you through those three steps? And they're like, yes, of course I do, you idiot. I'm not here just to hang out. Please tell me how you can solve my problem. And you go, great. For you, we would. Insert pillar of transformation or stepping stone so that benefit, desire, or problem. Right? And we just do that three times. Okay? Because they're the three steps. And let me give you an example again. And then we're going to break this down and I'll tell you why there are 1,320 different ways you can slice this egg. Uh, here we go. We're going to get more traffic. Now, this is, I'm going to base this on an assumption that the dentist has come to me and said, we've got a website and nobody calls us off the website. Nobody says, I've just visited your website and I want to make an appointment. That never happens ever. So why have we got this website? Right? We go, okay. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to get more eyeballs to that website so we can get your phone ringing because that's what they've told us. This bit here is what they've told us they want. This is something that we already do, okay? This is something that we already do. We already drive traffic to dental websites, and this is what they told us they want. So how would we do this? Well, we already know how to get traffic to the website. We just set this up with one of those fancy phone numbers you can track through Google Analytics, right, or one of those other platforms, and then we go, hey, you've got two phones in the practice now. Every time that one rings, you know it's because of us, okay? So that's the first thing we're going to do is get more traffic to your website so we can get that phone ringing. The second thing we're going to do is reduce your cost per patient because it's way too high at the moment so that you have more money left over as profit. Now, I probably wouldn't say that. I would say, you know, we're going to reduce your cost per patient so you can increase your profit margin. Now, <clears throat> you might say to me, well, how do we reduce their cost per patient? Well, I'm basing this again on an assumption that I've had a conversation with this dentist who has told me that they have an email database of 3,500 people and they've never emailed them. And by the way, they have no five-star reviews on Google. Awesome. Easy. We're going to get you a bunch. I'm not going to tell them this, but what you and I talk about in the background, say, let's get this, let's get this dentist to put them in a review funnel. Let's get some re-engagement campaigns running through email and get a whole bunch of people in their email database to either give us a, uh, a review or come back in for a hygiene plan, right? Existing people we know coming back for more work reduces our cost per patient. Yes, cost per patient acquisition. acquisition yes, yeah. right? Instead of going and chasing new people, let's get more revenue from the people we already know because that's going to be more profitable. So more revenue, same marketing spend. Now, I'm also basing this on an assumption that I work for an agency who already knows how to do this for dentists, okay? Um, now, uh, <laughs> oh, don't tempt me, don't tempt me, James. Um, now, uh, now, 
The other thing we're going to do, the third thing we're going to do is we're going to sell more non-doctor services so that we can free up more of your time. This is the magic trick that we do as a dental agency is you've told me, based on what you've told me, that 4% of your current uh, patients are on a dental hygiene plan. And you've also said that that should be at about 15% based on what some of your dental colleagues have told you. So we're going to set up some dedicated campaigns to increase your hygiene plan revenue because guess what? Dentists don't do hygiene plans. Who does a hygiene plan? Assistants. That's right. The dental nurses do the hygiene plans. So the dentist can still be making revenue and the dentist doesn't need to be in the mouth. And that's how we're going to free up the dentist's time because that's what the dentist told us he wanted, to free up more of his time. And we're going to do that by increasing the revenue coming in from hygiene plans, okay? And then the dental nurses can do the hygiene plans and the dentist can go and play golf one day a week with his buddies. Sound good? Now, I'm going to come back in a moment and talk about how we get 1,320 different combinations here. But here's the other thing. The, this is the crux of the godfather method, right? The best thing is... If we don't get you more clients, we'll give you your money back. Now, you need to know that you can get results for your clients. This is just one example of a guarantee, right? There are many other examples that we teach in the Godfather Method. But this is just one example, but you need to be absolutely certain that you can get results for your clients. So let me just roll through this as if we were having a conversation, okay? Uh, well, <clears throat> I'm glad you asked. Uh, we typically help dentists who are time poor, feel like they're a little bit trapped on the treadmill of their own practice. We help them grow their revenue, make that revenue more profitable. And typically speaking, we help free up about a day a week for the dentist so you can focus on growing the practice or just take Fridays off and play golf with your buddies. Does that make sense? Great. So uh, how does it work? I'm glad you asked. Uh, everything we do is customised for each dentist. Uh, and for you, this is going to be three steps really to grow that revenue, make it more profitable and free up your time. So based on what you've told me, the first thing that we would do is get more traffic to that website so we can get the phone ringing. Any questions about that? No, all good. Okay. Well, the second thing we would do is reduce your cost per patient acquisition, re reduce how much it's costing you to acquire a patient so that the revenue that you're making is more profitable. So more revenue, same marketing spend, or even reduce your marketing spend for more revenue. That's how we're going to get more profit there. And the third thing we're going to do is actually get you uh, more non-doctor services. So increase the percentage of your overall revenue that's coming from non-doctor services, like those hygiene plans that you mentioned, and that's going to help you free up your time. And we'll put a metric on there that we free up a day a week for you. Whether or not you choose to work that day is up to you, but our metric is we're going to free up a day a week. The best thing is uh, that if we don't hit these metrics by the time that we put it in, in the roadmap, we'll give you your money back or we'll just keep working with you for free until we hit those numbers. Okay, makes sense. Now, I didn't mention website. I mentioned once we're going to get more traffic to your website. I didn't mention SEO. I didn't mention care plans. I didn't mention any of the stuff, the email marketing, the copy. I didn't mention any of that because that's all the stuff that we're going to do in order to achieve what I've just promised, right? This, by the way, you can't get anywhere else. This stuff here, you can't get anywhere else because this is what we do. And this doesn't just work for vertical marketing. In other words, this doesn't just work if you're targeting dentists or accountants or lawyers or a particular vertical. This works if you're targeting small business owners, right? Or if you're targeting nonprofits. So if you work in a more of a horizontal or a diagonal market, not even sure that exists, I think I might've just made it up, uh, that this does work. Because what we're doing is we're just repositioning what it is you do, right? and crafting an offer here based on exactly what the prospect has told us they want. I'll come back to that. Diavetus Paulaskas, is that how I say your name? Diavetus Paulaskas, Paulaskas? Please correct me, please spell it out for me. So let's have a talk now about the 13, now have you got any questions, Pete? Do you wanna challenge me on any of this stuff? Uh, I mean, not really, okay. you know, I know where you're going. <laughs> so. Okay, all right. So, so here's the thing. This here, let's come back. Let's come back here. Right. Step one, for you, we would. This can be one of your pillars of transformation or one of your stepping stones. 
And if you've been through client acquisition formula, or in fact, if you go through the Godfather method, you will learn that there are three pillars of transformation. You can have 17 if you like. I would suggest that you start with three to keep things simple. And you would have three stepping stones within each pillar of transformation, right? So, for example, one of your pillars of transformation might be conversions. I'm just going to make something up, right? And the three stepping stones within that pillar of transformation, conversions, might be quality of traffic, on-page uh, conversion rate optimization, and retargeting, either email or advertising retargeting to drive people that we've already captured back to the thing to convert. I'm making this up. But now we have a pillar of transformation called the conversion rate exploder. Please don't <laughs> use that. Please don't use that name. It's cheesy. We now have the traffic quality control to make sure we're only getting targeted traffic from search engines. That's a stepping stone within the conversion rate exploder. We have uh, the the on-page uh, conversion rate optimizer, which is actually looking at the page that's getting the conversion, whether it's a checkout page or an opt-in page or whatever it is, right? If you click to call page, whatever it is, that's the on-page thing. That's a stepping stone within the conversion rate pillar. And we also now have a retargeting uh, exploder within the conversion rate exploder, right? So we have a pillar of transformation and three stepping stones, okay? If that's the business you're in. So you now have four things that you can talk about for the one pillar of transformation. You can talk about the pillar of transformation or you can talk about the each of the stepping stones. You would talk about the pillar of transformation as a broad brushstroke if you are dealing with someone who is a simple client. And when I say a simple client, I don't mean a simpleton. I mean someone who isn't very sophisticated or isn't very uh, experienced at what they do. So if you're dealing with someone who is new to the game, a client who doesn't really have uh, a, a track record of, of doing digital marketing and they're not really that savvy, you might talk about, you know, just getting more conversions through the website. You might just mention the pillar of transformation at a high level. Okay. If you're dealing with someone who's more sophisticated, right, and who uh, has a greater understanding of what you're talking about, then you might actually dive in and just mention the retargeting campaigns because that might be the low-hanging fruit that they haven't got dialed in that is going to allow you to get them a quick win. So you talk about the stepping stone, not the pillar. So what that means, ladies and gentlemen, is that here you have 12 things to choose from to put in here, right? The pillar of transfer, this one here, number one, number one, there it is, number one. That could be one of 12 things that you talk about, right? It could be your three pillars or one of your nine stepping stones. Three plus nine equals 12. So it's good when the math works, isn't it? <laughs> so you can have what you can choose. You literally have a menu here that you can choose one of the 12 pieces, the Lego blocks in the Godfather method that you can pull in and put into your pitch. And you can change that for every client based on what they've told you. And I right. would suggest... I would suggest that you do that. That's yeah. a good so idea. This is, this is liquid based or fluid based on what you discovered during the first part of the strategy call. Yeah. Exactly. So if we've used one of our 12 here, and this is just a great little connector here, right? We're going to do this so that you can this, right? We're going to, uh, we're going to get more eyeballs on your website so that we can get the phone ringing yeah. and you can get more patients. So that's just a great little connector to the benefit, right? So if you've used one of your 12 here, there's you can start. There are 12 ways you can start this conversation here, right? How many have we got to choose from here? I'm going to go with 12. 11, because we've used oh, one of the we've 12. Used one, right? we've, yeah, used, yeah, yeah. we've used one here, right? You don't want to say the same thing twice. Yeah. I mean... Well, you can, but I would suggest that you use something else here. Now, this can be a different pillar of transformation or it could be a different stepping stone in the same pillar based on what they've told you, right? They might come to you and say, dude, we don't touch our SEO, man. We are killing it. We have got so much traffic to our website. We've got so much organic traffic coming from search. It's amazing, right? And it's just not converting. So we just can't, we might just talk about the three stepping stones within the conversion rate exploder. 
right? So you've got one of 12 to choose from here. You now have 11 options, 11 Lego blocks that you can stick in here. It could be a stepping stone from the same pillar. It could be a completely different pillar, or it could be a stepping stone within a different pillar based on the level of sophistication that the client has. Make sense? I'm confused. So if we have 10 options, 12 options here, we've used one that gives us 11 options here. We've now used two of our 12 Lego blocks. We have 10 left over to choose from here, right? Which means 12, I'll do the math for you. 12 times 11 is 132 times 10 is 1,320 different combinations because you've got, you can have 12, one of 12 here, then you've got 11 options left here. So that gives you 132 different combinations just there. And then you've got another 10 options you can use here. So that gives you 1,320 different ways to say the same thing, depending on what the prospect has told you is important to them. Right. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. And you found out what is important to them by way of the triage call, the homework, and the strategy call. So Correct. That's right. You should I am able, doing. You should be able to do that. Yeah. I am. Who knows that the man who decides? I am doing that. I am. I'm doing Jason's boss. Actually, it's Janet Pearson. That's right. It's Jason's boss. I am doing Jason's boss, but I'm pretending to be Jason. Uh, it is heavily inspired by by that man who used to be the voice of, um, what's the show? Janet, help me out. It's a show. He was. He was Giggle and Hoot. The show on the ABC is a, is a comedian actor in Melbourne. What's his name? I can't remember his name. Janet will share. Go and check this guy. He's a lamb. Jimmy Reese. Jimmy Reese. That's him. <laughs> so Jimmy Reese, he does uh, a Facebook videos about COVID, and he does this one. He does this this video. The man who decides the restrictions. The man who decides the lockdown laws around COVID. And Jason is the. The Jason is the guy that's asking his boss, so what about this and can we go to restaurants and blah, blah, and his boss is drunk and his boss is saying, no, Jason, we can't do that. It's stupid. Don't be stupid, Jason. It's very, very funny. And Jason, who I do with Oscar, is heavily inspired by Jimmy Reese. I'll say that. Go and check out Jimmy Reese. So uh, is it really 1,320 options or just the same price, 12 options in a different order? Price doesn't change. I wouldn't change the price, by the way. Not sure I understand that question, Nick. Is it really 1,320 options or just the same price, 12 options in a different order? Mm, um, well, so here's the thing. In, a, in, a, in what we call a signature system, you will basically end up with three pillars of transformation and nine stepping stones that you take your client on a, over a 12-month journey, right? Now, there's a whole bunch of other shit that you're going to do, right? Of course, we're going to install Google Analytics using Google Tag Manager, but we don't talk to the client about that because they don't care, no. all right? That might be part of our tracking, performance tracking right. stepping stone. That could be performance tracking stepping stone could include 37 checklists in ClickUp that right. you have to tick exactly. off, Yep. All right? That's just the stuff you have to do, right? So... He didn't mean to use the word price, by the way. Right. So, so there's not thirteen. There's not thirteen hundred and twenty. <laughs> thank you, Janet. There's not thirteen. Now, of course, everyone's left the live stream and they're off watching Jimmy Reese do Jason. So I'll just sit here and wait for everyone to come back. <laughs> Thanks for gate crashing our show, Janet. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, there's everyone's off on YouTube now. There's thirteen hundred and twenty ways to explain what it is you do. You don't have to do 1,320 different things. In fact, you don't have to even do 12 different things. You've got one signature system. This is the sign. This is what we do for. Let's talk about. Let's talk about weight loss. Let's talk about if you are a fitness coach. Let's talk about if you're a fitness coach, right? Everybody, come back from YouTube. I know Jimmy Reese is very funny, but come back here. Eyes here, please. Eyes this way. Eyes this way. Uh, if you were a fitness coach then uh, you and, uh, and someone said to you, listen, I need to lose weight, right, and I need to get fit because um, I'm having trouble running around the park with my young kids. You go, great. We can definitely help you with that. But I want to ask you a few questions first. How old are you? I'm 46. You're a 46-year-old dad, yes, and you're a little bit overweight, yes, and you want to lose weight and you want to get fit and so you can keep up with your kids at the park, yes. Excellent. Well, we can help you with that. 
But I do want to ask you one question. Did you know that once a man hits the age of 45, his muscles start to atrophy if he doesn't use them? What does that mean? Well, it means use it or lose it. In other words, if you don't do some basic resistance weight training on your arms and your chest and your legs and your back, those muscles will start to atrophy because your brain thinks you don't need them anymore because you're 45 years old. And frankly, you're more than halfway through and your brain's trying to preserve energy, right? So it's just going to cut off things you don't need. So resistance training is also really important. Oh, thank you. I didn't know that. Okay, so how can you help me lose weight, get fit and do a bit of resistance training so my muscles don't atrophy and I don't turn into a blob? Well, uh, we can definitely help. And for you, right, <clears throat> let me come back to the script here. For you, the three things that we would do first is we would. Now, this guy's never worked out, never been in the gym before, right? So I'm going to say the first thing we would do is, is work out a nutrition plan for you because there's definitely some very small tweaks we can make to what you eat that will help you drop some pounds pretty quick because, you know, at this point in life, you've frankly, you've got some easy wins here. You've got some pounds that you can drop pretty quickly. Uh, we just need to do a quick nutrition plan, make some changes. In the next 21 days, you'll definitely lose some pounds. Right? Great. Sounds great. I'm in. Okay. Then we're also going to just set you up with a basic cardio uh, program couple of times a week, you do about 20 minutes of cardio. It'd be fairly light to begin with until we build up your, your, your cardio fitness. And that's going to get the heart ticking, which is going to keep you fit and keep the blood pumping around your body. You're also going to end up feeling great because blood circulates oxygen throughout the body, which is what makes you feel good. And the more your heart pumps, the more the blood pumps, the more the oxygen flows, the better you feel, right? Sound good? Great. Then we're also going to just put you on one session a week of resistance training for the next 90 days, uh, probably next 30 days. Uh, just to get the muscles kind of activated so that they know what's going on. And then after that, we can reassess and ramp up. Sound good? Excellent. Sign here. Now, what does a personal trainer do? Nutrition plan, weight program, uh, accountability. Uh, we put you on a cardiovascular program. We're going to, I mean, what I haven't told the guys, we're going to weigh you. We're going to measure your waist. We're going to measure your biceps. We're going to measure that double chin that you've got. And we're going to measure that every week so that we can keep a track of it. I haven't mentioned any of that to him because he didn't mention that that was important. He didn't come with his measurements and go, mate, I want to, want to see these numbers move, right? He told me what was important. So I have told him what he needs to know in order to make an informed decision that I'm the right person to help him solve the problem. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that he's going to get and that we're going to do as well. But I don't need to talk about that in the conversation because he didn't ask and I don't want to confuse him. At this, point, at this point in the conversation, I think we're, it's just Troy talking to me. Like, right. Everyone's hearing my left. double chin. Uh, oh, no. Is this about me? Did this become about me? Yeah. No, 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 no. It's not about you at all. Not about you at all. So um, does that make sense? Right? Like, so what I see happening all the time, what I see happening all the time is people sit across from a prospect or they're on a Zoom call or whatever, whatever the situation is, and they're like, you know, someone says, oh, I heard you build websites for dentists. And you say, yes, we build websites for dentists and we also do a little bit of SEO too. And uh, they're like, great, well, that should cost me $1,000. How much do you cost? Oh, um, $2,500 a month for a 12-month commitment. And they wonder why they're not landing clients. Hmm? Uh, would somebody really think nutrition, cardio, resistance – is different from resistance, cardio, and nutrition. Well, it doesn't matter because it, it, it doesn't matter, Nick, because what uh, somebody, like, here's the thing. Nobody cares what it is you do except you. I don't care what it is you do except you, right? You care what you do and you care how good you are at what you do. I don't care. Not that I don't care about you as a human being. I do. I just don't give a shit what you do because it doesn't impact me at all. I don't need your services, so I'm not interested. I hope you're having a great time and doing some good work that excites you and making lots of profit. I just don't actually care what you do. What I care about is what's in it for me, right? And what the dentist cares about is what's in it for the dentist. And what the fat 46-year-old father cares about is what's in it for him, right? And what he has said is he said the most important thing is that he wants to lose weight because he wants to get fit. And... I'm saying as an expert, well, the first thing we're going to do is have a look at what you're eating because 70% of your body shape is made up of what you put in your mouth. In fact, it's probably about 80%. You can't run it off, 
right? You can't keep eating pizza three nights a week and run it off. It just doesn't work that way. So I'm just playing, you know, personal trainer here, please. I'm not a personal trainer. Don't please don't take my advice seriously. So uh, that's the difference between 12 in a different order or 1,320. Yeah, sure. So that's right. It's 12 in a different order. That's right, so which gives you 1,320 different combinations. 1,320 different combinations. Go and get 12 different – go and get 12 uh, uh, Lego blocks, right, and go, oh, well, I'm going to put the red one – go and get 12 Lego blocks. Hey, Nick, do the exercise for me, will you? I know you've got a bit of spare time on your hands. I want you to do this exercise for me. Go and get 12 Lego blocks that are different colours. Start with one colour and then choose a different colour and then a different colour and just stack them three up and work out how many different ways you can do that for me. It's 1,320. You start with one of 12, then you've got 11 to choose from and then you've got 10 to choose from. It's 1,320 different combinations, right? So selling the dream, bot the process. <laughs> exactly. Uh, excellent. I'm glad, James Murgatroyd. I hope it's been entertaining for everyone. Uh, so... Yeah, there's, that's right. We're not. You don't do thirteen hundred twenty different things. That's not the. That's not the. That's not the. The. That was never the idea. That's never the premise. You basically do twelve. There are twelve kind of big chunky things that you do for a client. You know, broken up into three kind of categories. We might do. You know, as I said, rankings, traffic, conversion. You might do. You know, whatever content. You know, traffic, conversions, or you know, leads, uh, nurture. You know, clients, whatever. You break those three big chunky things up into three other smaller stepping stones just to show people, right? <laughs> I know you are, Nick. I'm just playing with you. To show people that you've got a journey that we can take them on. And then out of those 12 kind of steps or those nine, the three stepping stones to the first kind of plateau and then the three stepping stones to the next plateau and the three stepping stones to the next plateau, we've now got 1,320 different unique combinations that allow us to explain what it is we do based on the specifics of what the person on the other side of the conversation has said that they are interested in. Does it make sense? I feel like I'm in the matrix right now. Mm -hmm. I'm confused. Mm -hmm. it shouldn't be confused. It should be very clear. Don't hang up. I have 1,319 more things to explain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and a guarantee. And I guarantee if you stay with me, I'll get through all 1,319 of them. Right. Excellent. Right. Any questions? Any questions? How do I learn more about the Godfather method? Oh, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Uh, there should be a link. So, by the way, we're closing the doors tomorrow to the Godfather method, and then we're done. It's over. It's finished. Uh, we're not going to do it again. So if you want to get the Godfather method, now is pretty much the only time you're going to uh, have to get it. So it's at the agency maverick, agencymavericks.com slash the Godfather method. Uh, I think there's a hyphen between each word. I don't know. Anyway, someone will put up a link shortly. Uh, agencymavericks.com slash the Godfather method. Um, so that's a great question. If there are only three requirements of scope, well, they're not. I'll talk about that in a second. How do you deal with a client disputing the scope of work? Results only. Okay. Well, this comes down to the fact that the client doesn't trust you. Right, exactly. So go back, go back to your positioning and your marketing, right? Also, you can drop the hashtag Godfather in here and we will get you the link. Or you can go to that very, very easy to remember link there, uh, <laughs> which is hubs.li slash ho dash lowercase gfr uppercase bo. Isn't that genius? Oh, boy. Or is that a zero? I'm not sure. Isn't that great? H-O, Godfather. I think gfr is meant to be Godfather. That's great. Ah. Godfather's got bo. There we go. Head over to the Godfather BO body odor, and there it is. Or there, there it is. There. The God, it's in the comments. The Godfather link. Order Troy. Order. Order Troy. Order. I don't know. I'll watch that YouTube video in a second. Helmet. Thank you. So um, the uh, what was the question? No. So there aren't only three requirements of scope. There's not three requirements of scope. First of all, if someone's arguing with you about scope creep, they don't trust you. Okay. Simple. So you know. I, no, I don't argue with anyone about scope creep. If they want something that I don't do, they can leave the building and get it somewhere else. This is what we do. Are you a good fit? That's the purpose of a triage call and a strategy call. So by the time you get to this point, you should know they're a good fit. Yeah, and right. they should trust you enough that they're not worried about that kind of question. Correct. And um, <laughs> mavgodfather.com is available. And 
and also, uh, so the 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 scope of work, as I said, there might be 115 things <clears throat> on the checklist that we're actually going to tick off. Let me give you an example. Lead capture can be a pillar of transformation, or it can be a stepping stone. Right. It can depend. It's your business. You can do whatever you want. If it's a pillar of transformation, it's typically going to be for people who have never done lead gen before. We go, well, we're going to do some lead capture and build your list, right? Uh, if someone wants to become an influencer, then lead capture might just be a part of that pillar of transformation, right? Because you're going to need to build a list. We're going to need to nurture that list and position you as an influencer. We're going to put, need to put out some authority, thought leading content, blah, 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 right? So lead capture can be a pillar of transformation or a stepping stone. But within lead capture, we are going to need to what? Sign up for a convert box account, install convert box on the website, get some call to actions programmed into uh, convert box, design some images to make the call to actions in convert box look compelling, write the copy for the call to action that gets people to click on the thing, plug the convert box into active campaign and make sure they go into the right sequence, write the, right? There's a whole litany yeah, of things that you're going to need to it's do. It's a whole project. We don't talk about that. We just talk about capturing leads for them. That's what they want. They just want to capture leads. So there are more than three things in the scope, right? What we do is we chunk it down into three big milestones and then three stepping stones to reach each milestone. Okay, and that's just a conversation, it's a communication framework because nobody really cares if you're using ConvertBox or Active Campaign, and if they are, then they don't trust you. Unless they're a large enterprise client and they've already got this infrastructure baked in and they're like, well, you need to pipe leads into Salesforce, that's a whole other conversation. <clears throat> right. Okay. Has this been fun? Is anybody still here? Are they all over watching? What's his face on YouTube? What's his name again? I can't even remember his name. Reese. Reese. Jimmy Reese. Jimmy, Jimmy Reese. Reese. Jimmy Reese. That's I wrote it Jimmy down. Reese. Giggle and Hoot. He was on Giggle and Hoot. Now he's he's hilarious. He's a very funny man. Very funny man. And that's where I stole Jason from. Um, still here, says Vera. Are you suggesting that we use the new wording on the general website copy too? No, I'm not suggesting that at all. Or only during sales process, calls and proposals. I'm suggesting that you don't need to write proposals anymore. Right? Thanks, Candice. Hey, Candice. And her husband, Kim, and their business partner, Megan, also joined Sales Accelerator yesterday. Very excited to have you uh, here. And they are probably going through the Godfather method right now because they get that as part of Sales Accelerator too. Um, I'm suggesting that you probably don't need to write proposals anymore. You can just go that sales process that we showed you at the start here, you know, pre-qualified triage call, strategy call, bang, close them off the strategy call. If someone asks for a proposal, what they're really saying is, I don't believe you or I don't trust you enough to buy from you right now. I need some more guff to look at overnight to try and convince myself. Can you send me something fancy like a PDF or something that explains what it is you do? And my answer to that is, well, no. What would you like to see in the proposal? I'll just answer the question now if you like. Right. And they go, well, I don't know. I just want to see a fancy PDF. I go, well, I can make a fancy PDF for you if you like. I'll just go to Canva and spit out a template. Does that answer your question? What do you actually want to see in the, do you want an executive summary, a one-page executive summary? Do you want a really long functional specifications document? Because you're not going to get one of those from me. What do you need? What do you actually need to see in a proposal for you to go, this makes sense and it's a no-brainer? On a scale of one to 10, where are we at with this being a fit? And if there are seven, I go, great, how do we make it a nine? What do you need to know to know this is the right next thing for you, right? So... Proposals just slow the whole process down, in my experience, from someone who gives away a proposal template. Okay. There you go. We've moved. We've all moved to statements of work or whatever you want to call it at this point. Yes. Contract, basically a contract. That's right. Correct. Yeah. James Murgatroyd has already signed up for the Jason method. Excellent. Very glad to see you in there, James. We're going to have lots of fun. An invoice? Absolutely, you send them an invoice. Or a receipt. I prefer to send people a receipt once they've already paid. I send them. We send them a statement of work, Robert, and a contract, and they sign that, and then they pay. Um, we don't. I don't typically don't do terms. I don't send an invoice and say you can pay in thirty days. I say no, no. You pay before we start work, and then you pay 
periodically. The signature system is typically sold, excuse me, this is a whole other conversation, but the signature system is typically sold on a monthly recurring basis of, you know, we have we have Mavericks Club members selling signature systems between 1500 and 3800 a month. So it's typically not something that we do an invoice for and then spend 30 days chasing the payment. No. That's right, pay now. All right. Hey, I've got to bounce. Me too. This has been fun. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comments. Otherwise, get on over to agencymavericks.com and the Godfather Method. We are closing the doors tomorrow and then we're done. So hurry up and get in and we'll see you inside. And I promise um, I'll bring Jason into the Godfather Method and we can hang out and have some more fun there, okay? Can't right. wait. Can't wait. Excellent. All right, I need to go now. This All has right. been super fun. Take Bye. care, guys. We'll see you.